A few days ago, a subscriber posted a comment in our community section here on YouTube asking me to do a video about putting together an urban get home bag. And with everything we see going on right now in a lot of the urban areas with the George Floyd protest that has turned into riots and looting, it's easy to see why it's a good idea to have an urban get home bag with you at all times when you go into any urban environment. Now keep in mind that this is different from our everyday carry kit, or ADC. I covered that a few days ago, and I will, about a week and a half ago actually, and I will link to that video in the description box below. This is also different than our automobile kit. I did that video a few days ago, and I will link to that video in the description box below also, and up here in the cards, you can check those out after you watch this video. But those two are separate from the Urban Get Home bag. The Urban Get Home bag is essentially the same thing as any other Get Home bag with just a few added exceptions that are tailored that are tailored for a more urban environment. Also keep in mind when I'm showing you what's in how everything laying here, also keep in mind that some of this stuff that I'm, here, I'm going to show you here today might be illegal to own, to carry, to have on you in your state or in that, whatever city you're in. I'm not going to take into account any legalities or nothing like that. You have to be responsible for that yourself. Check your own laws. If you want to follow those laws, follow those laws. If you don't, then don't. That's up to you. What I'm showing you today is what I think should be in a well thought out urban get home bag. Okay, guys, we're going to start from the left side. We're going to go over from the left side to the right side and talk about each item individually. The first item is one of the heavy duty contractor bags. Don't get the thinner, lighter weight trash bags get the heavy duty contractor bags. These have multiple uses from uh, improvised shelter, ponchos, ground coverings, all kinds of different uses for these bags. But be sure to get the heavy duty contractor bags versus the lighter weight and more flimsy trash bags. Another thing to one of your urban get home kit is a good multi tool. Doesn't have to be this exact brand or exact model or exact kind. Just get a good quality tool to keep in your urban get home bag. A flashlight should be self explanatory. The smaller flashlights take up less room and also get some uh, extra batteries. If you can get a rechargeable flashlight that will recharge and you have a solar charger, which I'll show you one here in a sec, then that'd be a better option than this because you can charge it up via your solar panel. Some uh, glow sticks is a good idea to have in an urban get home kit. Of course, you need something to start a fire with. So, some stormproof matches, or just some matches in a waterproof container, a couple of lighters, big lighters, some string. Multiple uses comes in handy for all kinds of things. I did a video here a few, about a year ago, talking about. Uh, I forgot what the video was called now, but I was talking about how to make improvised alarms just for this, just for this type of situation, like you're having to come from the city and you're having to stay inside of uh, abandoned buildings and things, how to make alarms with some string and some stick and some tin cans. I'll link to that video in the description box below and you can check that out also if you watch this video. Some uh, mosquito repellent, some paracord. Obviously, you need some food. Some uh, you can get what you like, but some uh, granola bars, energy bars for hiking, and uh, survival food tabs are also an option. Uh, some Mountain House MREs. Just catch some food because you'll need some food. It needs to be lightweight because the lighter weight your kit, the better. Because you don't want to have it's going to be it's going to have some weight to it. I'm not weighed this, but this is going to weigh probably about. I'd, if you count the rifle, this would probably weigh about 25 pounds, I'd say, all this will. But you need to keep it as lightweight as you possibly can. Uh, first aid kit. It's like the best first aid kit that you can because you might get hurt, you might get cut. Having some uh, quick clot in there is definitely a good idea. Quick clot is always a good idea on the first aid kit. This here is, uh, you want your cell phone. You want to have be able to recharge, keep your cell phone charged because just because the cities are burning doesn't mean that your cell service is going to be out. The cell phone you have, I mean, it could be out, it might not be out, but you could have the internet, 
you can look at your GPS to find out where you are, where you need to go. So having a cell phone is you can contact someone and in case of emergency, contact your family. You can contact your family and uh, organize a meeting point, tell them that you're okay. So it's a good idea to be able to charge your phone. This is a solar charger and I have a longer cord with the solar charger, but that way you can plug this in and have this, I think this is a 10 foot cord and have this 10 foot away from you like sitting outside somewhere and you can be inside of a building somewhere and where you're more out of the way and not be seen from people passing by as easily and you can be charging your phone up via this charger and this cord. You know, also, a good idea is to have uh, one of these power packs that's already charged up at all times to give your phone a quick boost. All this stuff is to keep your phone going because phones are very important. You can look up information. You can, if you have the internet still going, you can look up information. You can get your GPS to find out where you're at, where you're going, where you need to be at. You can find different numbers that you might need to call. You can call your family. All kinds of things a cell phone is good for in this type of environment. When you're trying to get out of an urban environment, you want to keep your phone going if possible. Another thing is a firearm. This is a Glock 19, but it doesn't really matter as long as you know how to use what you have and it's reliable. This is a Glock 19. This is a crossbreed holster. I like a inside the pants holsters because if you're in an urban environment you don't want to be going around with a handgun strapped to your side you want to be uh, as inconspicuous as possible you want to blend in you want to be a you want to be the gray man that blends in until you can get out of there and having the inside the pant holster for concealment is a lot better idea than having a belt holster on your side you won't draw near as much attention and plus you still have the element of surprise some extra magazines for your handgun i have uh these are two of the larger capacity glock magazines two extra 15 round magazines 15 round magazine in the gun okay and going farther over a mess kit in case you get some you know you need to eat canned food your food so mess kit is a good thing. A water bottle, a metal water bottle is a lot better than a plastic one because with a metal water bottle you can actually heat your water up to purify it if you need to. You can actually cook in a metal, it's a stainless steel, you can cook in this. And so it's good for carrying water, plus it's good for heating water, and plus it's good for cooking. You also want a, a way to filter water on the go. And this is excellent for that. There's different models, different brands of water filters i like these i have two of these and i found them to work really well they're not really they're not really expensive so you can buy several of these and put these in your different bags uh see so where am i at here and then a good knife as you all know i love the more bushcraft black i did a video review of this knife about a year ago and i will link to that in the description box below also you can check that out but i took this knife and i batoned it through some heavy dried out hickory wood and it worked didn't break you couldn't ask for anything any better especially considering the, the weight of this knife I like the grip this is an excellent knife all the way around and highly recommend it for your urban get home kit or your bug out bag or whatever kit you want to put this in your hunting kit it's a good and all around knife and in my opinion this is one of the best survival knives on the market. Another thing you should consider is some road maps of your area. Where you're going to be at, get some good road maps of the area. That way you can, in case your phone goes out, your GPS isn't working, you can go back to your maps and figure out where you are and where you need to go to. Also, a good compass is excellent to find out using the maps and the compass to find out your direction, where you are, which way you need to go. Definitely recommend it. And lightweight and cheap. So, another thing is some tissue paper to, uh, you know what this is for. Tissue paper or some uh, wet wipes is good or both. A dust mask. And this isn't for, this isn't for the COVID-19. This is for, uh, dust you remember uh during 9 11 when the twin towers came down and you saw the dust coming out 
from that. This is good for something like that to keep keep from breathing in so much dust while you get out. So that's why you have one of these and like the one or two of these actually these are lightweight, cheap, if you can and so they're good to have in your urban get home bag. Another thing is now we're getting these things here that could be considered illegal or kind of controversial in some areas. Uh, pry bar. Obviously you're wondering why would you want a pry bar in your urban get home bag? Well, to pry open doors if you need to, to break out windows so you can get in if you need to get in. Like I, this is, uh, some people will disagree, but sometimes I'm not telling you to break the law. Like I said at the start of the video, some of this stuff is illegal to, to have or to do. And I'm not recommending that you do these things. What I'm saying is that in a life and death situation, you might have to do these things in order to stay alive. And that's important to keep in mind. Is it more important to you to not break the law or to stay alive? That's a decision that you may have to make at some point in the future. So, good pry bar. Good for breaking in, breaking windows, get in the doors, get in the filing cabinets, get in the different areas. You're not normally supposed to be getting in. A handcuff key. That should be pretty obvious. And you might get captured. You might get kidnapped by the police. You might get kidnapped by someone that's uh, got some handcuffs and not the police. And you might need to get away. It's a good idea to have one of these on you somewhere. Like I said, it might not be legal in all places, but if you can have this on you and get to this, then you can escape, hopefully. Another thing to consider are lock picks. Again, these are for getting in places once the doors are locked because you're not necessarily breaking in places to steal or to loot or destroy. You might need to get in somewhere to get away from danger, to hide, to get out of the elements until you can get organized and get from that point to another point. Again, this is it to break in things, to steal stuff, to loot or anything like that. This is tools that are to save your life if you have to use these tools. If you need shelter for the night, you might need to get in somewhere, but the doors could be locked. Another tool that you might consider are bolt cutters. These are good for cutting like chain link fences, getting in through padlocks, good for all kinds of purposes where you need to cut stuff that ain't normally supposed to be cut. Again, something to consider, bolt cutters, lock picks, handcuff key, pry bar. Another thing that you want to add in your urban get home kit are some lightweight work gloves. Another thing that you might consider is something like this Ruger PC carbine. You won't be able to carry this you won't be able to carry this out in the open in an urban area because you'll draw too much attention. But if once you get out of the urban area or if you're still in your vehicle this can definitely even the odds up in that situation. You can put this, you can have the, the snap rack that I reviewed about a year ago on this channel and you can put this behind your back seat in a secure position, throw a coat over it, no one will see this in your vehicle. And if something happens, you'll have a long gun. This also comes apart and breaks down, so you can put this inside of your backpack to carry with you on your trip. It won't fit in these backpacks, but you can get a different backpack that it will fit in. And when you get out of the main urban area, where this won't draw as much attention or you can get inside the forested areas. It's best if you're traveling to travel not on the highway, especially if you're on foot, it's best to travel beside the highway, off to the side. That way you can slide on by because people will ambush you on the highway. Roads will be blocked, possibly. So it's a better idea to stay off the highways, especially if you're on foot as much as possible. But you might be able to get home in your vehicle get back from the urban area to your home or bug out location in your vehicle. In which case, having something like this will definitely, even the odds, should you have to defend yourself from whoever. The good thing about this, if you use a Glock handgun or the Ruger handguns, the magazines, this is the Glock magazine, they're interchangeable with the Glock Model 19, which I showed you a minute ago. 
Magazines are interchangeable. Ammo is interchangeable. So there's no need to carry separate magazines and separate ammo. The Smith & Wesson Iron Weight is my main everyday carry handgun that I carry in my pocket, in this pocket holster. I take this thing with me when I go for walks. I take this thing with me everywhere I go. And this is in my pocket. So if you see me, this 38 Iron Weight is in my pocket. I keep this Glock in my truck at all times. If I'm going to go anywhere like on the back roads or something around here, I will put this in the snap rack or an AR-15 in the snap rack. Well guys, if you liked the video, get a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. If you know anyone that would benefit from watching the video or that would enjoy watching the video, then be sure to share that with those people. If you haven't subscribed yet, then please subscribe and turn on notifications be notified when I upload a brand new video so you don't miss that video. I'm going to create more. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks for watching.